Hey everyone, Tesla held its Battery Investor Day yesterday to a Tesla-filled audience, and there were some pretty big things announced, so let's go over them. One of the only consumer-facing products revealed was the Model S Plaid Edition. Um, and uh, we should probably talk about uh, the you know, Model S Plaid. We were all expecting to get this, and the specs do not disappoint. We've got a range of over 520 miles, a 200 mile per hour top speed, and a zero to 60 time in less than two seconds. To me, it felt like Tesla saw the Lucid Air taking the performance crown and they wouldn't have that, so they snatched it right back. They also posted their Laguna Seca time, and while the previous Model S fastest time was 1 minute and 43 seconds, the Plaid Model S posted an astonishing 1 minute and 30 seconds. Not only does that beat the Lucid Air by around 3 seconds, but it puts the Tesla in the range of the McLaren P1, which, I mean, just look at the McLaren and then look at the Tesla, and you're telling me the Tesla is faster by just a hair, but faster than this beast? Are you kidding me? It looks like a joke. On one hand, you have a four-door family sedan, and on the other, you have a maxed-out performance transformer-looking animal, and the family car wins? This just goes to show what kind of engineering madness Tesla had concocted in their laboratory. I seriously don't think I can overstate how insane it is for a giant saloon to be posting numbers like that. It doesn't even seem possible. It's going to cost $140,000 and it's going to be available in 2021. $140,000 sounds like a lot and, well, to be fair, it totally is. I certainly won't be buying one. But when you compare it to other cars with that level of performance, it is a steal. For example, that McLaren P1 that it just beat out at the Laguna Seca costs at least a million dollars, if you can even get your hands on one. But performance aside, I'm a bit disappointed. I know I'm not the only one that was hoping for some small redesign for the Model S, and it made sense to make the chain with the Plaid version, but that hasn't happened yet. If you go look at Tesla's website to order one, it actually looks like the Plaid version is visually identical to the non-Plaid. It's not that big of a deal. I still do really like the look of the Model S, but I would have liked to see an update. Speaking of not getting an update, the Model X didn't get one either. Sad day for Model X fans like myself. Another consumer-sided product that they teased was a $25,000 Tesla. They left a mysterious sheet over the car, so we don't know what it's going to look like. We've seen some ideas, but nothing set in stone. I do remember back in 2018 when Musk said a $25,000 EV was possible within three years, but time will tell. The last consumer-facing product I saw was about autopilot, and I think this is the biggest one. Musk said, we had to do a fundamental rewrite of the entire autopilot software stack. We're now labeling 3D video, which is hugely different from when we had the previous labeling single 2D images. We're now labeling entire video segments, taking all cameras simultaneously and labeling that. The sophistication of the neural net of the car and overall logic of the car is improved dramatically. What this means exactly for autopilot remains to be seen for the public, but a private beta is going to be coming out within the next few months. I've probably talked about it too much in the past, but autopilot is going to be an absolute game changer and will revolutionize the way we think about cars. It's going to be huge. The rest of the event was mostly about manufacturing and batteries. And while those topics aren't as sexy as new cars, they're just as important. One big announcement was that they'll be producing their rumored 4680 cells with their patented tabless design. If you missed my Tesla predictions video, I went over why going tabless was a big deal, but the short of it is this. When electrons move through batteries, it produces heat, and the farther the electron has to move, the more heat it produces. That's part of the reason why Tesla used a relatively small 2170 cells. Removing the battery tab means the electron doesn't have to travel as far, which means less heat. This allowed Tesla to make a bigger battery cell without generating as much heat. Bigger battery cells mean less battery casings are required and faster production. Speaking of faster production, in previous battery designs, the battery manufacturing machines were having to stop and start when they'd run into a battery tab, and those tabs cause higher error rates. It was a slow process. So on top of the efficiency gains in the battery itself, you also get manufacturing efficiency gains. Musk also talked about their new dry battery electrode from Maxwell Technologies that will enable them to save huge amounts of factory space, material costs, 
and water savings. And along with their new bigger and tabless cells, Tesla also announced they'll be changing how they build the frame of the car. Currently, when Tesla builds a frame, the frame is structural and then they add the batteries in modules which are made up of cells on top of that. New innovation is that they will now be ditching the modules and adding the cells straight to the frame and using those cells as part of the frame structure. This allows them to use less material strengthening the frame while maintaining structural rigidity. That's going to give you a lighter overall car, which means better efficiency, which seems to be the theme of this whole event. Musk also stated that they'll eliminate the use of cobalt in their cathodes, but he didn't offer a timeline. I wish we had something a little more concrete, but moving away from cobalt is still a win. Another cathode material they said they'd be using more and more is nickel. Musk stated, we need to have a three-tiered approach to batteries. Iron for medium range, nickel manganese as medium plus, and a high nickel for the Cybertruck and the Semi. Using different types of batteries dependent on the needs of the vehicle allows Tesla to diversify their supply chain, which is always a good thing. One focus of the event was about Tesla scaling their battery production to three terawatt hours by 2030, which is a number that is just totally unfathomable to me. I'm not saying they can't do it, but just for some reference, that's 85 times what they can currently do at their Nevada plant. That being said, if anyone can do it, it's Elon Musk. Goal number one is a terawatt hour scale battery production. So Terra is the new giga. We're talking about 100x growth in batteries for electric vehicles to achieve this mission. Um, and we are going to get there, it's just a matter of how fast, and our intention is to accelerate it. Yeah. You basically need on the order of you know, roughly 10 terawatt hours a year of battery production uh, to transition the, the global fleet of, of vehicles to electric. I think what's so important about Tesla reducing their battery and manufacturing cost is being able to reach more of the automotive market. At a starting price of 35000 there are simply a lot of people that aren't able to buy that car. We've been hearing for a long time that once the battery packs can get down to around $100 per kilowatt hour, then they can reach price parity with internal combustion cars. This would be absolutely huge because electric cars have significant advantages over ICE vehicles, including lower maintenance costs, lower fuel costs, not to mention not directly burning fossil fuels. In 2019, Car and Energy Research Advisors estimated that Tesla's battery pack costs were around $156 per kilowatt hour. If Tesla can get their battery costs down 56% like they're claiming to on Battery Investor Day, then that gets them below the $100 per kilowatt hour required for price parity with ICE cars. Once we see the original purchase price of EVs come down as low as traditional ICE cars, I think we're going to see an explosion of EV sales, and reducing the most expensive part of the EV, the battery, is a huge step forward for Tesla. While we see the stock price go down today about 10%, which in my opinion because of the short-term investors, wanting to see something that was happening right now, I think this announcement positions Tesla really well for the next decade. The biggest disappointments for me were that they didn't announce a million mile battery. I had high hopes on that one, and unless I missed it, which is totally possible, they didn't talk about battery cycles and degradation at all. I can imagine they've made improvements to the battery's life cycle, but they weren't addre addressed yesterday. When Musk talked about their battery claims, he was sure to hedge them with the statement that it could take up to three years to realize those claims, which in the EV news cycle is a lifetime. Also, they didn't address charging speeds. I can make some educated guesses that with their new battery technology, they'd be able to increase their battery charging speed, but I didn't see any official statements from Tesla, so it's up in the air, at least for now. Now, don't get me wrong, I think Tesla made some amazing announcements, and I'm super excited to see where this takes Tesla and their manufacturing prowess. I even bought more stock this morning with the 10% dip. But there are some things we were expecting, and they just didn't announce them. And that leaves a lot of people, including myself, feeling a little disappointed. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.